The small town of Penzance is located on the southwest tip of England. But it wasn't the beaches, landscape, or the laid-back pace of life that drew us to this picturesque part of Cornwall. It was the chance to meet up with a remarkable world champion. Hello. All right. Meet Julie Kitchen. I like being pampered. <laughs> Julie is married to Nathan Kitchen. When Julie's in shape, she's got the best body in the world with regard to female athlete, you know. Their mum and dad to twin daughters, Amber and Alea. When I watch them fight, I'm more nervous than when I'm fighting. It's really hard. But this demure mother of two is a woman full of surprises. I kind of know myself, I'm number one in the world. Nicknamed the Queen of Muay Thai, Julie is a 14 times kickboxing world champion. So as I was growing up, I was a really shy, quiet girl, so I really, really did not expect that I would be number one ranked in the world. Julie didn't take up Muay Thai until relatively late on in life, after the birth of her twin daughters. To lose weight, she attended Thai boxing lessons, which were being taught by Nathan. It wasn't until I actually had my children, Amber and Alea. I think they were about two, maybe three years old, and I was still carrying a little bit of baby weight. Hey. My mum and dad said that they would babysit for me so I could go along and do a little bit of exercise, get back into shape. And uh, it was just nice because I got to spend some extra time with Nathan also. Um, just like, after a couple of weeks training, it just really, I was like, wow, I'm buzzing. I haven't done exercise for ages. I was really enjoying it. Even her husband couldn't believe that his mild-mannered wife would instantly take to martial arts. Well, everyone who knows Julie just knows that she was like the person that would walk in her room and go red um, if someone spoke to her. She, you know, she'd be the person that would just so unconfident of herself um, for her to train in Muay Thai and fight is, was just... You know, I mean, everyone said it's just an unreal prospect. But I said, you know, if you knuckle down, you put the work in, yeah, I'll put you in. And um, she surprised everyone. You put weight on. <laughs> Trained by Nathan, Julie's won her titles across five different weight divisions. But her career started with mixed success. Due to a lack of female Muay Thai fighters in the UK, it wasn't long before she found herself up against some of the toughest competitors in her division. I've done a few fights, um, which I, I, I won, and then I was kind of put in the ring quite early with a few of the top girls, and at one point my record wasn't all that great. I had quite a few losses, um, more than my wins. Those were the early days when Julie was still learning the ropes. Today, she passes her knowledge on at Touch Gloves, the gym she runs together with hubby Nathan in the centre of Penzance. From here, your second round is push kicks, your longest weapon in Thai boxing, pushing with the bottom of the foot, through with the hip, and the legs that you're kicking with, bring that arm down. And the other There's one nothing bashful about Julie when she teaches her daily gym classes. Julie and Nathan Kitchen invited us to tag along on one of their usual jam-packed days. Muay Thai is a minority sport, and even more so in tucked away Cornwall. Kickboxing gets better exposure in big urban centres, with a far more diverse sporting scene like London and Manchester. This has never stopped the kitchens from looking for ways of promoting their sport locally. And there's a new project on the horizon. They will take over a custom-built gym as part of a new excellence program for sport at Gems Bolitho School in Penzance. Um, we've, we've chosen a number of sports, um, but Mai Tai, for example, we've chosen because what better way to open an excellence academy than with a world champion. It's a perfect opportunity for us, and it's a perfect opportunity for Touch Gloves Gym and Nathan and Julie. Mm. I mean, I've probably got a year tops left to fight in, so I can put all my efforts into working alongside the school then, um, working with the children, especially the, in the elite programme of the Thai boxing. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it, just to pass our knowledge on and see the children really exceed in their sport. It's an absolute boost for me because I can, I can last another, another 20 years now. 
just off this, you know, like someone getting behind us, um, realizing the potential of the sport, and you know, and and how the how the children, you know, develop their their attitudes through it. I mean, it's a lovely, respectful sport. Um, it's very cultural, and um, hopefully, we can take take these children to a world level. And um, you know, hopefully, open up schools around the world. Dream come so, true, really. Just, yeah. The pair have a long track record training youngsters and turning them into champions, including their own daughters. Amazing, amazing energy those boys that boy had. I mean, it's incredible. You know, it, um, I sponsor them because I mean, Julie and Nathan have put so much into this place. You know, and it gives the kids somewhere to go. You know. They also run a children's club at their gym and are actively involved in the community where they promote sport and campaign against bullying in schools. Their gym has become a focal point for the town and they receive a lot of support from the locals. And Louis will continue our sponsorship with them because I think it's good for the area, good for the kids and, and obviously the fact that Julie's 14 times world kickboxing champion, she deserves all the support she can get from the Cornish, I think. Daughters Amber and Alea have always been part of life at Touch Gloves. They've been training with mum and dad since they were three, and they've won a host of competitions. Julie might be a tough fighter, but when her little girls take to the ring, it's hard to watch. When I watch them fight, I'm more nervous than when I'm fighting. It is quite, oh, I have tears in my eyes. It is really hard. Um, but because of their age, it's no head contact at the moment. They've got body armour on, they've got shin guards on, so it's only the top of their leg that's exposed that could get some bruises. But um, I can definitely see, like, Ryan and Nathan streaking them when they're in that ring. It's, they don't want to lose, they want to win. And so far, they have been. Hello. Living in a small place like Penzance can have its advantages. When she finds time in a jam-packed day, it's not far to go for a bit of pampering. And on those rare days with a little extra time, Julie simply can't resist popping into her local hairdressers. Right. Pop this on for you, Got arms on that one. Thank you. Can you just trim my fringe a little bit today? Yeah. And then put it up to me. Okay, yeah, that, like we usually do a bit of a quiff and quite yeah. tight on the sides to get out of the way. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Give it a bit of a shape. How are the dogs, right? Yeah, fine. For a busy mum with a full time job, this is a welcome distraction. Nice weather, Yeah, it's nice. Most of the days I'm in the gym, so I'm quite often looking sweaty with um, bad, a lot of bad hair days. So when I do come and get my hair done, it's a real treat. And then when I do go out, I do like to try and present myself quite nicely. I like being a bit girly. So just because I'm a fighter doesn't mean that, um, you know, I don't look after my, my appearance. Most athletes tend to be a bit superstitious and have a ritual they follow. Yeah, I always do my own hair. Um, it takes me just over half an hour and I use the little bands and I kind of break all the sections down into little squares. And I just always do it on the morning of my fight. When I get up, I have breakfast, and then I go back to the room and always do my hair. And it's just something that I've always kind of done, so I won't change it. I won't have anybody else do it for me. It's part of my sequence. Julie has known hairdresser Josh for more than seven years. Their conversation soon turns to one of their favourite subjects, tattoos. Um. I don't know how many I've got. You've got loads of butterflies, haven't you, on yeah, your back? Yeah, I've got like 12 little butterflies on my back. And then I've got a couple of Thai tattoos. I've got one on my shoulder called Five Fingers, um, which is like a good luck charm. Um, I've got another Thai one on my leg, which I had both these done with bamboo in Thailand. Um, and then because I don't really wear my wedding rings very much, I've got um, a wedding ring tattooed on, but when I put my rings on it kind of hides the tattoo because I've always got the hands in the glove. I'm frightened that I'll either damage them or I'll lose them taken off. Um, and then I've got one on my forearm with like the girl's names on. And I'm just having a new one done on my ribs at the moment, um, which consists of flowers and it's actually got my ring name, which I was um, crowned through my fans, Queen of Muay Thai, so I've actually had that 
tattooed on my ribs now with some nice flowers and I'm just having the flowers coloured in nice and brightly at the moment. But, um, tattoos are definitely addictive once you have them. I definitely, know. yeah. I know it doesn't suit everybody, but I personally really like them. And a lot of people say, what do you do when you're 80 and you've got your tattoos? Well, when I'm 80, I, I don't think I'll be showing my body off. So, <laughs> And they're part of me. It's part of, part of the story of my life. So I really like them. We all get old and wrinkly and tattooed together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's quite the norm in this day and age, isn't it? Yeah, I think so, definitely. Thank you. All right. It's wicked. Thanks, sure. Josh. No worries. And what's Nathan's verdict? Here we go. We're all set for the day now. Just glamorous. The kitchens put their success down to their relationship, both in and out of the gym. We're definitely a force to be reckoned with and a, and a cracking team. You know, um, that's the beauty of us. I don't just say goodbye to my student. You know, we go home together and, um, you know, she's got me going on. and in her inner ear at all times so um, you know we are a, a, a brilliant team. I've definitely learned to listen to him um, maybe in my first few fights I'd go back to the corner he'd tell me to do something and I'd go out and do my own thing but it's all a learning curve um, and I think that's why I'm so strong if I didn't have him I might not train quite so hard and I think it's our tight-knit team that makes me number one. Coming up, we reveal exactly how hard Julie hits and what it takes to prepare for a big fight. Go a bit harder on them now. <laughs> More ounces. And we also find out what it's like for Julie to step out of her comfort zone. <laughs> homework. I need to do my homework. is being a mum and I'm married to Nathan Kitchen who's also my trainer. Obviously being a mum isn't her only job. We travel to picturesque Cornwall in the southwest of England to get up close with Julie Kitchen, the queen of Muay Thai. Julie and hubby Nathan run Touch Gloves Gym in Penzance but like most mums with a full-time job she enjoys a bit of pampering. Coming up, we discover what it takes to be the number one fighter in the world. Julie and Nathan reveal why they live in Penzance. I just love Cornwall and um, I think it's a great place to train. It's nice when I'm running to get all the fresh air in my lungs. And there's also a very unexpected side to this champion. Spirit haunts me, Juliet. I see more of you now you're dead than when you were alive. <laughs> 